True Gamer here and I'm back with another episode. Now today is your lucky day because I'm going to save you some money by doing a throwback Blue Peter style tutorial. And for the youngsters, if you don't know who Blue Peter is, just Google it. And if you wasn't fortunate enough to get hands on with the PS5 system software public beta, at least what I'm going to show you today will prepare you for when it's your time and it should be very soon they'll be rolling this out so everyone can enjoy everything that the that the new update has to offer first up we have a Samsung 980 Pro 1TB Gen 4 PCIe M2 with read speeds of a whopping 7000 megabyte per second now they are other SSDs but for the price this is the best quality drive you can get this for 180 if you're unlucky or between 140 150 if you're lucky as for me I was super lucky I must have caught someone wanting a quick buck fast so I managed to grab this snatch it up for 125 pounds including postage what a bargain and most importantly you will need a heat sink which is not expensive at all seek and you're fine for the right price within your budget trust me and this one I'm using is a brand and it's called the brand name advanced gene so that's what the heat sink will look like and make sure they include the thermal pads or you'll be buggered and I'm going to display a diagram of all the dimensions that this heatsink beholds right now. I'll leave a link in the description box down below if you want the same heatsink as me. Now you can get ones with RGB lights and fans but I just kept mine plain and simple plus no one's really going to see the drive anyway because it stays covered up and hidden. I wouldn't recommend any lights simply for heating purposes. Now that's the only confusing thing about this exercise is getting the right measurements for the heatsink because one false move you'll be screwed. Now if you're willing to pay more you can get SSD drives with a heatsink built onto it already like the Fire Cuda 530 does it and the Western Digital SN850 they both come with a heatsink but I would say Samsung 980 Pro is the way to go and this way you save yourself a little bit of change in your pocket okay step one guys what you want to do is remove any dirt on your SSD. Now all my shiny chips are covered up so I was rather fortunate there but if you've got any chips exposed that's what you've got your your wet and dry wipes for. I'm gonna give it a wipe anyway just for demonstration purposes. Guys you're basically wipe the chips. You basically wipe off all the chips there and you will flip it over and give it another wet wipe if you've got any exposed chips. As you see mine's are covered up so I don't really need to do it. I don't, well I hope I don't. I do the dry wipes anyway just to get rid of any dust if there's any there. And then you will dry it like so. On both sides. This chips here. Then we have some here. Then step two, what you want to do is grab one of these thermal pads, as you see it there. That's the other side. Then you want to remove the protective film. And then once that's removed, you want to place it in the bottom part of the clasp do a better job than me and try and place it as accurate as possible into the middle 
like so. I think that's it, there we go. As you see it there, that's what it will look like once it's placed in the bottom of the clasp. And then you want to remove the, the protective film on the other side, like so. Be careful you don't grab it out. And there you have it. Voila! In step three, guys, you want to grab your NVMe SSD. And this side will stay facing up. So don't put that that way. You want to flip it and have this facing to you. Be careful, don't cover up the screw. You want to kind of tilt it. I'm going to stick with this. But yeah, it looks like that. It may have to put, be pushed back a little bit. But that's about right there. That's what it would look like. And as you see, the label with the warranty and every, everything is exposed. So that should be facing upright. Now step four, we grab our other thermal pad. And we, re we repeat the process as what we did last time. Take off the protective film. And we're going to apply it to our MVM, NVMe drive, like so, the best I'm going to get it. And then you need to remove the protective film on the other side. Be very careful not to tamper with any, any microchips on the board. Very, very fidgety. A lot of hassle, I must say, for people who are not used to doing these kind of things. It's going to be irritating for people who don't like fidgety, doing fidgety things. It's only 100% has to roll out a customised one. A NVMe made specifically for the PlayStation 5. That would save a lot of people a lot of headache. And then once you've removed the protective film on that side, your heatsink and your NVMe drive should look like that. The warranty sticker completely covered with the thermal, with the thermal padding. The main thing is just try to make sure the thermal pads have covered most of the chips. Now it's time for the fifth and final step. What you want to do is grab the upper heat sink and place it into the bottom the bottom slot, kind of tilt it in and then press down on the other side and hey presto we have done it. We have created our own personal heatsink for our NVMe SSD super speed drive. Okay so once it's all connected we can now install it into the PS5 M2 slot. So now it's time for the final part of this operation. Now, once you grab your PS5, guys, it's the opposite side. We have to remove the faceplate. So it's not the one with the PlayStation symbol. It's going to be this side. And yeah. So opposite side from the disc you would pop off the faceplate like so. Don't need that much force, there you go. Pretty easy. And 
then we grab ourselves a Philip head screwdriver or a poxy drift. Poxy drift might work the same because they both have a star shape. So we have to, as you see there guys, this is where the M2 slot is and we have to install our newly created NVMe SSD drive. So once we take out the screw, we can remove the cover, like so. Then inside, we have to remove another screw right there where you're going to screw down the NVMe drive and it's another star shaped screw so I just want to give you a heads up on that one and also which is a good thing so depending on the size of your NVMe drive there's different size screw slots so yeah it's very versatile and it caters for everyone Okay, now it's time to implement the NVMe with heatsink. Have the NVMe positioned the right way. As you see guys, you have the fan here. Now, the back of the NVMe where we got screwed down will be on this side. I'm going to flip it around to make things easier for me, myself. So once you're putting it in guys, kind of till it in. And I can say I've got more than enough room to play with here. Wow. Can't believe how big it is, man. You shouldn't have no problem with finding a heatsink that fits it. As long as it's got the right width. You've got to kind of tilt it in and clip it in. There you go. Once you hear the clip, you're ready to go. And the little screw which we removed will be going back in to keep your drive steady. The mitt is pretty easy to do. The only annoying thing is trying to line up that the thermal pad. But other than that, it's gone pretty smoothly. Just trying to get this screw back in. So before I put back the cover, I'm gonna give you a quick idea of what it looks like inside of the bay. There you go. Oh, looks like that. Fits very beautifully. So if you've done that smoothly without a struggle or having to force anything down, you know you're on the right track and you can replace your M M2 slot cover with confidence. Like so. So once we replace the screw, we can assemble our faceplate back on. Ta-da! We have our new and improved PS5 ready for action. Now let's see if I can carry on using games that was already installed on the NVMe SSD without having to format it again because I was using it externally via this and that is the ASUS ROG Strix Arion Me to USB enclosure. Now this little mechanism here served me very well but at least now we don't have to keep transferring data back and forth. We can now enjoy playing PS5 games directly from the NVMe SSD drives. So now I'm going to move over to the PS5 interface and run some experiments. Thank you. 
So as you see guys, everything is working according to plan. So if you do decide to do it yourself and make your own heat sink, I'm going to display another diagram in more depth. So take a, take a screenshot or pause the video. So as long as you don't go over their measurements, you'll be fine. But like I said before, there's plenty of space to play with inside of that M2 slot. Okay, and another thing is, the new software is excellent, but it would have been nice if we could um, play PS5 games off an external hard drive and have more choices with the controllers, like at least we could hook up our PS4 controllers and play PS5 games, you know, That'd be, that would have been a big step up if we could do that with the new update we can now use PS4 DualShock controllers but other than that beggars can't be choosers at least they've done that we can now have access to that M2 slot okay guys if you like the video give me a thumbs up even better subscribe till next time see ya